So there are about 20 million babies born prematurely, low birth weight every year. And most of them don't have access to modern equipment that can save them. They don't have access to high-end healthcare. Some of them, not even electricity. So what can you do to try and solve that massive problem using smart thinking and more widely available tools? To answer that question, from Embrace, from Bangladesh, from Bangalore, please welcome Jane Chen. So I'm going to be sharing my work at Embrace today. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to tell you the story of how I became motivated to do this in the first place. And it goes all the way back to my childhood. As I was growing up, my parents really wanted me to become a doctor, to the extent that my father would make me practice saying my name. He'd ask, what's your name? And I'd have to answer, Dr. Chen. <laughs> Perhaps it was this early brainwashing that piqued my interest in healthcare, although I would not go on to become a doctor. Instead, in an act of rebellion, I became a management consultant. But a few years into my consulting career, I read an article in the New York Times that would change the course of my life. The article was about the AIDS epidemic in central China. Millions of poor farmers in the 90s had contracted HIV through selling their blood. But the way the blood was collected was unsanitary. Everyone's blood would be pooled together, the plasma separated, and then each person would be re-injected with the remaining red blood cells in the belief that this would allow them to generate blood again more quickly. As a result of this, in many of these villages, 60 to 80% of the adult population was HIV positive. The epidemic was wiping out an entire generation of people and leaving behind millions of orphans, like the one you see here. Something about this situation deeply shook me. And I realized in that moment that we, that, that you and I, are amongst the 0.1% of the luckiest people in this world. We've won the genetic lottery. That I could have just as easily been born into a different life and, and suffered the same fate. So I quit my consulting job and I joined a small startup NGO that was helping the children who were left behind, most of whom were not HIV positive, by helping them to obtain an education. We were one of the only NGOs allowed to work in these areas because of the political sensitivity of the situation. Many of these blood collection campaigns were run by the government. Oops. Can you go back one slide, please? Uh, in the time that I worked with this organization, we helped about 3,000 children. But there are also the children that we were not able to help. This little boy is dying of AIDS. When we went into his home, his mother was crying and begging us to help her son. But it was too late. There was nothing we could do for him at that point. And I realized that he was amongst one of millions of children who die every year because they're not able to access the right medications or the right treatments. And the most frustrating part of it is these are medications and treatments that exist. In the US or in the UK, anyone who needs AIDS medication can get it. But in places like this, it was impossible. There was something hugely unjust about the situation. And it fueled in me the passion to try to bridge this enormous disparity in healthcare that I saw through technology. From there, I went to Stanford Business School. Not surprisingly, when I got into Stanford, the first question my father asked me was, can you transfer to the medical school? While I was there, I took a class called Design for Extreme Affordability, which brings together engineers and MBAs to develop affordable technologies for people living on less than a dollar a day. This is the incredible team that I worked with that would later go on to become the founders of Embrace. The challenge we were trying to tackle, build a baby incubator that costs less than 1% the cost of a traditional incubator, which is about $20,000. So the first thing we did was to understand the magnitude of the problem. As David said, 20 million low birth weight and premature babies are born every year around the world. 
4 million babies die in the first 28 days of their life. That's 450 babies every hour. One of the biggest problems these babies face is simply staying warm because they don't have enough body fat to regulate their own temperature. And as a result, many either die or they grow up with severe long-term health problems because so much of their bodily functions are going towards staying warm that the rest of their organs don't develop normally. Temperature regulation is the primary function of an incubator, but incubators are not only expensive, they require a constant supply of electricity, they're difficult to operate, so you're not going to find them in rural areas where many of these babies are dying. Instead, you hear stories like this. This is Sujata. She lives in a village in South India. Sujata gave birth to her baby two months prematurely, but she didn't have the means to access a hospital. Instead, she and her husband kept their baby under a light bulb to give him warmth. The baby died about a day later. As we traveled through India, we heard dozens of similar stories. And we realized that what was needed was not just a lower cost version of what exists today, of a traditional incubator. We needed something that could work without a constant supply of electricity, that was easy enough for a mother or midwife to use, that was portable. So we went to the drawing board. These are the very first sketches of the Embrace device. We wanted something that looked like a little sleeping bag that would be intuitive for a mother to use and ultra portable. We then asked ourselves, what could give warmth at a constant temperature without the need for electricity? And we went back to high school physics, to the fact that when a material changes phases, let's say from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a solid, it does so at one constant temperature. What if we could find something that melted a human body temperature, we could heat that substance with hot water, and as it went back from a liquid to a solid, it would do so at a constant temperature. We didn't know what the material was at that time, so we prototyped with the closest thing we could find, butter. Lots and lots of butter. We then went to a thrift store, and we purchased as many fake baby dolls and baby supplies as we can find, got lots of duct tape, and started piecing together the first prototypes. In this first rendition, we actually had a tube directly sitting in the sleeping bag into which you would pour the boiling water that would then heat the wax. Then someone pointed out to us, it's probably not a great idea to have boiling water right next to the baby's head. So we quickly scrapped that idea and built a separate heater. Here we realized that most babies in these countries don't wear diapers. So you needed a waterproof material that was super easy to clean. Cleanliness would be critical because the product would have to be used across multiple babies, and we didn't want cross infections to happen. So we created the sleeping bag out of one entire piece of fabric, so there would be no seams where dirt could collect. We then tested the product with mothers. By then, we had identified this wax-like substance that was completely non-toxic, food grade, in fact. But mothers didn't like the idea of their babies sitting directly on top of the, the wax pouch in case it, it leaked or the, the pouch ruptured. So we created a separate pocket in the back where the wax would lie. And then we took the product to doctors who requested that we put a little transparent window in the front of our sleeping bag so they could monitor the baby's breathing and color. When we needed to do more testing, we would use our own family members. This is my nephew that I stuffed into one of the prototypes. <laughs> And the last thing we needed was something that would indicate to the user when the pouch was in the right temperature or when it needed to be reheated. So we added a liquid crystal display that sits on the wax pouch and changes colors according to the temperature. Well, as we went into villages and tested this with mothers, they would say to us, we don't trust Western medicine. If you told me to give a certain dosage of medicine to my baby, I would cut it in half because it's probably too strong. So if you told me to keep this at 37 degrees Celsius, we'd keep it at a little less than that because it's probably too warm. And that led to a really important design decision to make this binary into a happy face or frowning face instead of a numeric scale. And so it was in this way that we tested and retested and iterated and prototyped over and over again until we finally arrived at the product that we were ready to launch. This is the Embrace Warmer. Looks like a little sleeping bag made out of entirely waterproof materials. One piece of fabric, no seams on the inside. Got the little viewing window in the front here. 
But this is the core technology. This is a pouch of, of the phase change material that can be heated either with boiling water or with a short burst of electricity for places with intermittent access to electricity. And once this melts, it maintains the exact same temperature for eight hours at a stretch, after which you can simply reheat. Just place this into the little pocket back here, and it creates a warm micro environment for the baby. Embrace is now being distributed throughout India. We have pilot projects happening in eight countries. The most exciting aspect of this work hasn't, hasn't been the design. It's been seeing the product in use and saving lives. This is one of the very first babies to be placed in the Embrace warmer. Use 850 grams, tiny. When I went to this hospital, the doctor said to me, there's no way this baby is going to live. And if it weren't for your product, we would have just left him to die. I went back to visit two weeks after this photograph was taken. The baby was still alive and was gaining weight. And two weeks after that, he was stable enough to go home with his family. This is Manjula. She lives in a, a tribal area. Manjula lost her first two babies and then gave birth to a third premature baby girl. Unfortunately, in many of these areas, women not only lose their children, but then they are blamed for the loss of their children and ostracized by their communities. In this case, you could visibly see Manjula's confidence starting to come back as her baby started to, to get healthy and to gain weight. And that's one of the really important aspects of our work, not just saving babies, but empowering these women to save their children. This is Kirti. Kirti, like Manjula and like so many of the women that we meet, lost her first baby and gave birth to a second premature baby girl at about one and a half kilograms. The baby was kept in our product for a week's time, and this is the baby about three months later. When we went to visit, you can see she's at a nice, healthy weight now. And Kirti and her husband were so excited about the product, they had gone back and told all of the local villagers about Embrace. The mood in the house was festive as they were debating what to name the baby in the nine-month naming ceremony. And as we were overjoyed, although we were overjoyed to see how healthy the baby had become, it was also a stark reminder to us that in India, most families don't even name their babies for the first nine months because it's so common they'll die before then. This is one of the most recent cases. Uh, this is an orphanage that we work with that rescues abandoned babies. When this baby was found, he was only 950 grams. They kept him in our product for about 30 days. And this is him seven months later. I went and visited about a month ago, and he was totally ha happy, healthy, very interactive. The orphanage informed me that this was the first time a baby of that size had survived there. Here are a couple pictures of our product being used around the world. And I'm going to show a short video so you can hear Yesterday, what healthcare workers on the ground are saying. There was one point nine kilogram baby who was wrapped very well, but still had a temperature of 34 degrees centigrade. And that baby was not suckling. Two hours from the time of putting into the embrace nest, the baby spontaneously started to suck. The baby's doing well, and the rest of the babies from now will be in good care. The main advantage of the warmer, um, Embrace warmer, its, its portability, its ease of use and uh, safety. So there is no separation of the mother and child and mother can feed the baby and uh, the bonding is improved. We had a 900 baby, we needed to put him on a radiant warmer, not a single warmer was available. Immediately we thought of Embrace and we put the baby inside that. So as far as neonatal mortality, in terms of low birth weight, preterm babies, Term babies with very low birth weight, all of them are safe and sound and comfortable in embrace. Embrace has helped thousands of babies at this point, but we realize we're still at the very beginning of this journey. Every day we get emails from people all over the world asking for the, the product. Um, I'll just read one of these that was particularly touching. This is Crystal from Uganda who wrote to us, the majority of premature babies are never given a chance to make it out of the hospital. Because there are no incubators, the babies are left to die. They are put on a table or directly in the trash without the comforting touch of their mothers in those final moments. It is our hope to get this product into the hands of every baby and every family who needs it, to help ensure that babies no longer die 
for lack of warmth. The long-term impact of this is actually a reduction in population growth. It seems counterintuitive, but it turns out as infant mortality goes down, family sizes start to decrease because parents don't anticipate their kids are going to die, and they start having fewer and fewer children. Embrace's long-term vision is to create a whole line of affordable healthcare technologies beyond the infant warmer. I'd like to end by coming back to Sujata. Sujata lost not only one, but all three of her babies. When I saw her recently, she told me she still thinks about her babies every single day. When we showed Sujata the Embrace Warmer for the first time, she began to weep. And she said to us, maybe if I had this, I could have saved my babies. Maybe I could have been a mother. Those words play themselves over constantly in my mind. It is through my experiences over the last couple of years that I know that a mother, no matter how impoverished, no matter how poor, no matter how uneducated, will do anything to save her babies. It is my hope that through simple, affordable, and locally appropriate technologies, that we're able to ensure mothers no longer lose their babies that children no longer lose their parents, and that innocent lives are no longer needlessly lost. Thank you.